and welcome back to the channel everybody today we're going to be talking about a new drop from cg this just came out here a couple of hours ago as we're recording this live this is the road ahead it is just announced so we're going to be going into this looking at this uh, i have briefly reviewed it just to kind of see what they're talking about and everything uh, but we'll look at this in a lot more detail here with you guys so that you know what's going on and you have an idea what's coming up ahead of time. All right, with that being said, let me go ahead and switch over. Okay, here we are looking at the Road Ahead. So it says, hi, Hollow Table Heroes. Welcome to the November Road Ahead. Below you will find all that you could wish for in regards to our seventh anniversary celebration. Update on the new territory battle. Sneak peek at a gear economy update and Dr. Afra. Uh, obviously, it says continued blah, 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 general stuff about thank yous. Uh, without further ado, grab a snack, etc., etc. Okay, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes 7th anniversary. Celebration time. We've got a, a lot in store for you from free things to great deals. Here's just a snippet of what you can look forward to. Free inbox gift will include nor new portrait title, calendar for mod slicing materials, job of the hut requirements. Um, items, I should say. Double drops, crystal promos, special Jawa deals. I'm intrigued to see whether that means like literally Jawa deal or if that's actually like the uh, um, relic Jawa type converter thing. Trove packs. I don't know what that means. Relic offers. Brand new pack focused on Razor Crest, Cat, Maul, Boba Fett, Sign of Django, and more. Okay, inbox gift contents. One Omicron material. That's a little not as good as I thought it would be. I was hoping to get a little bit more than just one material. Uh, 25 Zeta materials, 15 Omicron materials, uh, character shards, Balsh Leia, that's a good one, Aura Singh shards, uh, Skiff Guard Lando shards, that's pretty good, Chrysanthemum shards, that's good as well, million credits, million ship credits, 250,000 data cash. Carbonti Sensor Array Mark III, Mark V Stun Grun, Stun Grun, yeah, Stun Gun, uh, Droid Collar. So the gear itself does not appear to be that much. Um, I don't know what that's like in comparison to previous years, but it's not amazing. Signal Data, Signal Data, Circuit Board 100, Bronzium 80, Chromium 20, Erodium 5, Electrium 5, Zimbital 5. So that stuff's not terrible in my opinion. Uh, not amazing, but not terrible. Um, Mark 1 bonding pin, all of this stuff, I believe, is for <clears throat> um, mods. Pretty sure. And then Clone Wars Chewy. So, it looks like they're primarily giving us more uh, mod stuff than anything else. So it looks like we're getting one Zeta material out of it. Um, I don't know. I was super disappointed with the Omicron. I thought we'd at least get half of an Omicron. Um... I did not expect to get that small of a, you know, thing. Interesting. So that's a little lackluster, in my opinion. All right, new territory battle update. Hopefully this is a little more positive. The new territory battle draws near, following the exciting yet ominous rise of the Empire in the period between Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars A New Hope. This event has more zones than previous territory battles and will evolve over time with new bonus zones. So for those of you that don't know, um, this, this is now modular. So unlike previous TBs where it's pretty much you're locked in and it's not changing ever, they're going to be able to swap stuff in and out with this, this new TB. So they're going to be able to kind of adapt it and change it a lot like Conquest. They can kind of throw things into Conquest, Galactic Challenges, things like that. Change them frequently to make them new and fresh, exciting content, as they like to say. Uh, which which I am in favor of, without a doubt. I think that'll be very, very nice that they'll, they'll have that going forward. Um, more information on bonus zones, the rewards, and how they are accessed will be coming in the future. There are no dark or light side restrictions to this territory battle. It will be available to select during any TB window, meaning you can run the new TB twice a month if your guild fills up to the challenge. Furthermore, players will be able to utilize their entire roster, including all TB Omicrons, whenever playing this event. So that's a really nice thing. So that means that, so in the past with, with Omicrons, GAC obviously was the biggest thing because you got the most use out of that because you could use it all month long for all of these different events. <clears throat> um, TW was arguably the next most important because you would at least use that, you know, twice a month. Uh, well, in real, you know, realistically speaking, you'd be twice a month and you would be doing that twice each time. So four times a month. 
TB Omicrons, though, were terrible, because you're literally only using them once a month. Because you only do light side once, and then dark side once, and that's it. So it was just a terrible return on investment. Well, now, so if we're doing two TBs a month, then you're at least able to use that Omicron <clears throat> twice a month for TBs. Now, we'll, we'll see in a little bit here. You can obviously use those TBs, those, or sorry, those Omicrons multiple times each, you know, for each TB. So you could use it in each phase, which we'll get to in a little bit here. Uh, so again, just the bigger picture here is you're getting way more use out of TB Omicrons than what we used to. Um, <clears throat> Guild's currently earning higher level rewards from Geonosis, as Separatist as Might, and Geonosis as Revolt Defense, blah, 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 suited for success in this new TB. While it can vary greatly from Guild to Guild, we expect Guilds to generally move to this TB when they are earning around 20 stars from Light Side Geo TB, or getting close to max stars on, or sorry, yeah, Light Side, or max stars on Dark Side Geo TB. <clears throat> so for comparison's sake, folks, uh, my Guild that I'm in is actually pretty darn on that level. I think, if I remember correctly, we got 21 stars on the most recent Light Side TV. Uh, and I, th we're not maxed on Dark Side. I think we're like one or two stars short. Um, it's it's real close on that borderline. So like, and our, our GP is, I think we're roughly 320 million GP, somewhere in that range. Um, so that gives you a general idea. Like we're pretty much right on that spot where we could make that jump to this new TB. It's probably going to be rough for us. Um, hey, welcome, welcome, Fretzel. Uh, we're, we're doing this live on Twitch, by the way, folks. So if I start randomly commenting to people, you'll know why. Um, so our guild at 320 million approximate GP is pretty much prime for trying this new TB. Um, is it going to be difficult for us? I'm sure. But uh, I would think what most people are going to do is instead of doing the dark side TB where you're getting you know, pretty successful, pretty easy level stuff. You're probably going to try the new TB on your dark side and then continue using your light side like usual or vice versa. It probably depends on what characters you have. So for instance, I have Watt already, so I would have no problem not doing the dark side ones because I really don't need to get Watt shards versus I don't have Cam. So I would want to continue doing light side so that I can get Cam finished. Um, if you're in a guild though where you've got Cam already and it's probably going to be better for you than to go for, you know, the dark side Geo TV to maximize your return and your rewards and then do the new TV for light side where you're not getting quite as much rewards. Um, so it really kind of depends on your individual guild, <clears throat> but that should give you guys kind of a general idea of what we're looking at there. Just like other TVs, this map will have a special group of heroes that gain additional bonuses when used in any battle. Light side, Jin Urso, K2SO, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Old Ben, and Bodhi Rook. Could we possibly be getting a ship in the future? The fact that he's going to be made an uh, important character here makes me wonder about that. God, I hope he gets a ship. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Rebellious Persistence is the special that they get. This character gains 50% potency and deals additional damage equal to 35% of their potency. Yeah, that seems okay, depending on the character, I guess. Whenever a buff expires, all allies gain 2% offense, stacking max 100% for the rest of the battle. Um, I would imagine that's going to be very good for Jin. Jin has a ton of potency, if you guys don't know, in her kit. Um, that could be very good for her. That's definitely going to be a Rogue One slash Adrad team that's going to benefit the most from that stuff. With Jin, K2SO... Uh, maybe Bodhi Rook. I don't know how he's going to do in that situation. Mixed. Jabba the Hutt. Hondo Anaka. Dr. Afra, Kira. That's an interesting one. And Ahsoka Tano Fulcrum. I, the other ones I'm not surprised by at all. They're, they're, they're either neutral um, or new characters that we expected to be important. Uh, or played a major role during this time frame in Star Wars. Kira, though. Not a recent character. Not a requirement for anything. And it didn't really play that significant of a role during this time frame, at least not as of yet in Star Wars. I'm wondering if we're going to be getting a rework for her in that instance to see if she fits better with certain scoundrel teams and such. Back alley deals. Whenever this character calls other allies to assist, they gain 20% turn meter, and the assisting ally deals 20% more damage. Whenever this character attacks out of turn, attack again. 
So that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be great for Jabba, great for Hondo. Dr. Aphra, we obviously don't know her kit yet. Kira calls a lot of people to assist as well, so that's very good. Fulcrum, I don't believe Fulcrum calls people to assist that often. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, folks, leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, I, I do not have her uh, geared up at all, so I'm not really super familiar with her in general. Um, Dark Side, Grand Inquisitor, Second Sister, Third Sister, Reva, Lord Vader, Director Krennic, and Gar Saxon. Uh, Krennic, I think, is an interesting one in that as well. Maybe he'll get some um, some bonuses or something. Might of the Empire. Whenever this character uses an ability on their turn, they recover 5% health and protection and deal bonus damage equal to 2% of this character's max health to all enemies. Boy, that's going to be really good for Lord Vader. Lord Vader definitely will benefit from that. I imagine the Grand Inquisitor will benefit a lot from that too. Uh, obviously, we don't know about Reva's kit yet. I don't know. I don't know how Krennic and Gar Saxon are going to benefit from that at the moment. Note, these are still in balance testing and are subject to change. Obviously, everything in here, folks, is subject to change. <laughs> Other units may be added to these lists prior to release or in the future. I would expect they are going to add characters to this list. All right, careful planning around character usage doesn't align mixed zones, blah, 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 blah. Highly recommend that you get your Jabba the Hutt, Inquisitors, Scythe, and Dr. Aphra geared up and ready to go for this event as they'll be required for certain missions within this territory battle. We all knew that was coming. What to expect? This is where some, we get some interesting stuff, folks. Battle across the galaxy in six phases. Six phases. So that is not like the GOTB. This is more like the original Hoth TV, where we're going to have, I'm assuming, 24-hour periods of time for each of the phases. It'll occur across 18 planets in the starting zones, earning rewards like the new exclusive Third Sister Shards and the new Guild Event Token 3 currency. Oh, God. So we've got a new currency coming to the game. Ugh. Ugh as well as Guild Event Tokens 2, so you are not locked out of those shipments. Now, I think that's interesting. So does that mean we're only going to get Guild Event Token 3 and Guild Event Token 2, and so Guild Event Token 1 will not be given out anymore if you do this TB? Uh, to me, that seems, that seems problematic. I mean, unless the gear change really addresses the gear 12 crunch... Like we need gear, t we need the guild event token one. I personally tend to need guild event token one more than I do guild event token two. <laughs> so like to not get guild event token one anymore, that's gonna be bad. Like I almost feel like you're gonna have to alternate between this TB and an old TB. Ah uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I'm questioning that decision heavily. The return to six phases allows us to create more phases of content as well as provides a consistent experience for timing of each phase. I'm not... I've kind of gotten used to the whole 36-hour thing. Like, it's kind of nice because then I don't have to rush to do stuff. Um, but I also I also understand how they want to keep things consistent. So, uh, I'm not I'm not as mad on the 24-hour thing. The, the, the currency is more what I'm not happy about there. Zones are divided across three paths, light side, dark side, and mixed. Each zone features iconic planets or locations from the Star Wars universe with a number of character and ship combat missions, as well as mixed platoons. <laughs> platoons? Again? Come on, CG. I thought we learned from this. I thought we learned from this mistake. No one wants to have their stuff taken away from them, which is what platoons does. Like... Just have a special mission that requires certain characters, and then that's how you use those characters. Like This drives me nuts. I hate platoons so bad. They're so dumb. Ugh. All right, I'm over it. Battles are shortened to two counters each. Oh, so that's interesting. So there's only going to be two waves, from if I'm reading that correctly. Only two waves per encounter. Or, well... Yeah, I said that wrong. You know what I mean. Two waves for each battle that you go into, as opposed to six and or four, like that we had in GOTV, and utilize new and ex existing, I thought that I said exciting for a second, existing planet modifiers. Oh, interesting. Akin to those in Conquest and Galactic Challenges. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, maybe we're going to see a rework for Kira, or Bodhi Rook, or Director Krennic, because of the fact that they're considered, you know, special heroes. 
I'm more willing to bet instead of them getting reworks or being special heroes, that we're going to see specific battles that require them, and they're going to get modifiers to boost them and make them more powerful. That's what I would expect here, folks. Uh, I'm not opposed to that. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think that's a that's a good way to make them relevant in the TB, but also not, you know, affect where they're effective. I so tell you too many usages of the words effect. <laughs> not not change how effective they are in other modes of the game. All right, light side zones: Coruscant, Braca, Kashyyyk, Lothal, Ring of Kafreen. I think I said that right. And Scarif. Mixed alignment zones: Corellia, Felucia, Tatooine, Kessel, Vandor, and Hoth. And dark side planets, Mustafar, Geonosis, Dathomir, Haven Class Medical Station. I'm not sure what that is. Is that from Mandalorian, maybe? No, I don't know what that's from. Malachor and Death Star. Players can expect to see some classic encounters as well, like the Petronaki, I hope I said that right, Arena Monster Battles from Geonosis. <laughs> so, I think that's funny that we're still going to have that. Considering, so, considering the fact the vast majority of the player base still has not completed, like, light side GOTB. Like, for instance, I have never seen that Liger-looking thing. I forget what he's called. Like, I've never seen it, because we've just never made it to that point, because of how ridiculously OP the light side GOTB is. <laughs> so I think that's hilarious that they're just keeping some of that stuff in this, because the majority of us just have never been able to do it before. <laughs> Success across the territory battle will require strategic thinking around which teams and character use to use in the light, dark, and mixed paths. Furthermore, guild coordination will be more important than ever with the wide variety of new content. They they love to fluff that up. New content available at launch. Platoon bonuses, I'm not reading through all of that. Uh, especially because they're not telling us what characters are required. That's more what I'm interested in than what the actual bonuses are. Okay, third sister Reva. As we mentioned before, Inquisitors play a significant role during the rise of the Empire. Blah, 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 blah. Third Sister's power level is aimed to be similar to that of the Grand Inquisitor, challenging Galactic Legends in the Grand Arena game mode through her Omicron abilities. So in other words, she's going to suck? Is that what they're saying? Question mark? While Grand Inquisitor builds up as the, the battle progresses, Third Sister is impatient and comes out swinging. <laughs> Not unlike me at the bar on a Friday night. She will also be a tank, providing Inquisitorious squads with flexible compositions. That's interesting that she's going to be a tank. Hmm. With the caveat that she's still undergoing balance passes, her leader ability Zeta Tier will start all enemies with five stacks of purge. Teamed with Grand Inquisitor and his version of Patience, all enemies will start at max purge stacks of six, allowing Inquisitor teams under her to impose on the enemy team quickly. Taking inspiration from her backstory seen in the Obi-Wan series the first time Reva is defeated, she revives with hatred a buff previously seen on Darth Sion. Interesting. This will allow her to self-revive a second time during the battle, making her a tough target to take down. Hmm, that's an interesting design in her kit. So she's going to come out and do a crap ton of damage at first, which means you've got to go after her pretty quickly, I would think. But she's going to revive herself twice, basically. Uh, assuming you're not taking on someone like Gas or somebody that has it built in that people can't be revived. Interesting. Territory Battle Rewards Update. Hoth and Geonosis. As we mentioned in the last road ahead, uh, we'll update gear rewards for the existing Hoth, blah, 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 blah. Increase in the lower star rewards, smooth out the ramp. Um, <clears throat> intended to help lower power guilds get caught up, but preserve clear incentive to push for higher star totals. Um, they'll be publishing those a little bit later. Okay. Gear Update. This is probably what everyone's the most interested in. Gear Update Phase 2. As we enter our seventh year, we continue to be committed to bring new and exciting experiences like the Territory Battle to you and are also committed to ensuring that a new blah, 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 blah. With that in mind, we're announcing significant changes, significant changes, to a wide range of gear items, modeled after the character shard acceleration we did in 2020. So it sounds like we're going to get double gear. At a high level, these changes will double the amount of most gear, yep, available to all players, and then adjust the salvager to limit impact on the relic system. Interesting. These changes are designed to be focused on accelerating gear and not dive into significantly changing relics for the moment. I don't know if I like that. Let's walk through our major goals for this phase. One, to help existing players get new characters up to speed and usable, which I think is funny, 
considering usable things are relic leveled, and high level content. As the game has grown, so has the difficulty and requirements for many events, bringing a marquee character up to viability in a game where strong squads are often Relic 5+, which we just said, is a longer road than when we first introduced marquees many years ago. These changes will help shorten that journey and get characters up to snuff so you can feel confident using them provided blah, 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 blah. Benefits older guild, blah, 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 blah. More able to pursue exciting releases like Jabba blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, yeah. We want you to get levels faster. Got it. Two, to help newer players catch up. Seven years of releases to catch up on, blah, 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 blah. Exciting players and longer. This is just a bunch of fluff that's not really telling us anything. Be able to reach the relics I'm supposed to... Okay, so again, their goal is they want us to be able to gear up fast, but not relic up fast. Okay. The details. All gear items below gear 12... This excludes Mark 12 Armatech and Mark 12 Circa items. The suite of purple items only used in Gear 12 recipes and injectors in addition to Chirotex. We'll see their quantities doubled on most nodes, events, shipments, bundles, and packs. Okay. So, so everything from Gear 11 and below we're going to get doubled is what they're saying. Everything gear 12 and above is staying the same. I don't Okay, let's keep reading. I I'm going to start yelling. Maybe there there maybe there's more. <laughs> all PVE nodes. Oh, this is just it's detailed it's on where this stuff is coming from. I see. Okay, so it's doubled in PVE nodes, doubled in raid, doubled in mythic events, assault battles, territory battles, grand arena, territory war. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got these most shipments. Includes crystal and most other currencies such as go with currency, not include conquest currency. Any packs and bundles with the target items? Hyper okay, so yeah, great. We can we can buy some more bundles. <laughs> not adjusted by these changes. Gear challenges will remain unchanged. They're just previously. I'm I'm not mad about that. That's that's understandable. Daily activity gear rewards. Those were adjusted previously as well. Really? I, that I feel like could have been adjusted. Any places that reward gear twelve only items. Okay, so before I get into this, so the big bottleneck right now is gear 12, not only in terms of getting to relic levels, but also getting to high level relic levels. Like, it's not an issue getting from relic 1 to, say, relic 5. Most of us are able to do that without too much of a problem. It's getting from relic 5 and above that is what's difficult, because it takes away all of the gear 12 materials, which we don't have enough of. And you're giving us double of everything but Gear 12 materials. This doesn't do anything. <laughs> am I, like, am I, am, I, am I misreading this? Like, there is no... There's no change. None. None, none at all. Why is my audio sound all jacked up all of a sudden? Like, my left ear is gone. It's weird. All right. May, may, there better be better news down here. Other changes. Gear acceleration items will have their salvager conversion to relic materials reduced by 50%. Wait, what? Helps ensure those changes accelerate gear, but remain net neutral to the relic system. Okay. Alright, so correct me if I'm wrong. So that means that shower drains, for instance, one of the absolutely most critical gear items for us to salvage for relics, we're now going to get that cut in half. <clears throat> Although, okay, I, I think I think I understand what they're saying. <clears throat> so that's getting cut in half, but theoretically, we're getting twice as much of that through these changes. Okay, so it helps us to gear faster. It doesn't help us to relic any faster. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not as mad about that. That's that's understandable. Uh, the shipment prices of these goods will be reduced by 50%. Oh, that's not bad. I, I'll, I'm okay with that. Conquest currency prices for these gear items are not changed. We plan for new marquee bundles going forward to begin offering more gear at the established prices, making it easier to get head start on characters. Okay. Uh, first questions reading this is why are all these changes happening? Blah, blah, blah. No, nobody's asking these questions. Just like the last time. Nobody asked the questions that you supposedly thought were asked and that you're answering. <laughs> oh, interesting. 
Um, released alongside the new TV in December. So there we go. Now we know when the TV is coming out, folks. It is coming out in December. Uh, getting to gear 10 to 12 will be a smoother experience. Your characters will be up and running faster than ever. We'll monitor the effects of these gear changes very closely. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Dr. Afra and Sana Staros. Hey. So we put out a video um, yesterday about predictions. And one of the predictions we made was Sana Staros coming to the game. Looks like we're right on that one. Son of Staros, the final marquee character in Dr. Aphra's Legacy event will be coming soon. And with her release, the countdown to the event will begin. Patterned after the Starkiller Legacy event, this will require you to have all of the mo sorry, all of the recently released marquee characters. Hondo, ah, we called that one too. We said that we figured it was going to be BT1, Triple Zero, Son of Staros, and Hondo Anaka that were required for Dr. Aphra. Um, require them to be at Relic 5 to participate in the event and earn Dr. Aphra shards. Also, like the Starkiller event, Dr. Aphra's event will be available permanently upon launch. Oh, that's, that's cool. I'm okay with that. Information on Son of Stars is forthcoming, but we thought we'd give you a sneak peek at what Dr. Aphra will be bringing to the table. Designed to work exceptionally well in Grand Arenas alongside BT-1000, as well as the upcoming Territory Battle. Dark Side alignment and Scoundrel synergies give her flexibility in being used in either the Dark Side or Mixed Path battles. Uh, affinity for Droids will give her reviving... Ooh. See, reviving a selection of the... Uh, selection of them mid-combat, there we go. As well as summoning a hacked Separatist Commando Droid to her side of the battle. Ah, uh, so that'll be like the Dark Side GOTB, where we summon a Commando Droid. Interesting. Her Omicrons are designed to work in 5v5 Grand Arenas. It's worth noting that the two key members of her squad, BT-1000, have Omicrons in 3v3 Grand Arenas. So it sounds like their Omicrons will boost the team in 3v3, hers will boost the team in 5v5. You'll find that these three characters will form the core of any Grand Arena team involving... Any of them, Dr. Afrin or Joys are often work together in the comic book appearances. So I initially thought that maybe we'd see these guys under a Lord Vader, or not Lord Vader, um, Darth, Vader, Darth Vader lead. It's looking more like they're saying that she's going to be her own team with droids heavily. Interesting. Uh, okay, and then the last stuff that we've got here is just all kind of tech updates and everything. Not super vital at this point. Thanks for reading. However long you've been with us over the course of the da 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 da, da look forward to building upon knowing that Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is because of you that we get the opportunity to continue that journey. Until next time, see you in the hall tables. Okay. So, yeah, so the TLDR here, folks, is that, you know, we're getting everything from gear 11 and below much more easily. Gear 11 and below is not going to be hard to do. Um, gear 12 is going to be the new break. The, the breakneck point, which it, it has been. Um, I'm kind of irritated that they're not addressing gear 12 at all. I don't have a problem with Kairos being a bottleneck. I don't have a problem with that. But the rest of the gear for gear 12 needs to be addressed, in my opinion. That, that it's, it's, it's too steep, especially with relics. If we didn't have relics, I'd be fine with it all being steep like that. But the fact that it's required for relic levels, I'm, I'm sorry, CG, but you've got to address that. Uh, you do, especially because Kairos are are not just required at gear 12. That's the other thing that's kind of frustrating about this. So you're supposed to be able to go from, you know, gear 0 to 12 to super easily now. Well, you're not addressing the Cairo crunch. Like, Cairo crunch, whatever the fucking word is. Whoops, word is. <laughs> um, uh, this is so not satisfying, in my opinion. Uh, I'm excited for the TV. I think that'll be interesting. I think it's going to apply for most mid-level guilds to start with. Um, lower level guilds will probably not be able to do it just yet. Uh, I'm excited for Dr. Afra. I'm not going to be able to get her right away, but I'm excited for the content that's going to come with that. And I'm excited to see if it works like Starkiller in that all of the characters that are required are very, very useful and very good. Hopefully they are. Um, all right, folks. Well, that'll pretty much wrap us up here for today's video. Uh, if you have any comments... Um, and if anything that I missed, et cetera, et cetera, feel free to let me know. Um, if you like what you saw today, make sure you give me a like. If you want to catch more content that we've got coming up, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on notifications as well. And then if you'd like to join the discussion live over on Twitch, I'll have the links to that stuff below in the information on the video. All right, everybody catch you next time.